Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 26th of February 2012. I assume that many of you saw the beautiful conjunction of the Moon, Venus and Jupiter on Friday and Saturday nights. Although the Moon has moved further east in the sky, Jupiter and Venus will continue to get closer together in the evening sky. And in the next week, Mercury will have joined them, although a lot lower in the sky. Today's trivia question is about calendars. Ptolemy produced one of the earliest known calendars. What was the event that he used to define the starting year of his calendar? So what has been happening on the sun? Well, not much. Well, we just had a sea flare. Let's not all go out and party too much about that. There have been some nice chronal mass ejections. NOAA and NASA are forecasting that one of them will hit the Earth later today. There is no sign of it as yet, as you can see from both the satellite image of the auroral zone and the KP index, which is classified as relatively quiet at the moment. The proton flare is still underway, as we might expect. And again, according to NOAA, this was from a far side event, but I think they're wrong. The timing of that filament eruption that I talked about a couple of days ago in the southeast fitted the data almost perfectly. Unfortunately, Helio Viewer is having technical issues, so I can't make any of the custom movies that I usually do. So I decided to talk about the alleged connection between earthquakes and solar activity or planetary alignments. Earthquakes have been blamed on a good many things that include solar flares, geomagnetic storms and planetary alignments. Let's start looking at why people think solar flares cause earthquakes. Here's a bar chart showing the timing and relative intensity of the major earthquakes that have occurred so far this year. Major earthquakes here are defined as those above magnitude 6. As you can see, we've had 10 of them, ranging from a 6.1 all the way to a 7.2 on January the 10th. Now, for us to have scientific evidence that there is a connection between solar flares and earthquakes, there has to be a significant number of earthquakes coincident in time with solar flares. There also has to be some relation between the size of the flare and the size of the resulting earthquake, and, of course, a physical mechanism to connect the two. So let's take a look at the large flares that we've had so far this year. Here blue represents M flares and red X flares. Again the height of the bar represents the intensity of the flares. Does this curve look anything like the earthquake curve? Well let's compare them directly and see. To me they don't look similar. The largest earthquakes occurred when there were no flares and there were no earthquakes associated with the M8 or the X1.7 flares. There is, however, an M flare that occurred on the same day as a significant earthquake, shown here by the yellow arrow. So now have we found a significant connection? Not really. There is a likelihood that some overlaps will occur by random chance. There are lots of fancy statistical formulae to work out the probability that two data sets intersect. However, rather than getting into all of that, I will use a simple version so we can get a rough idea of how, what we should be seeing. If there are 10 major earthquakes in 57 days, there is an 18% chance of an earthquake having occurred on a given day. We've identified seven days with significant flares. So the chance there would be an overlap is seven times 18%, which would come out over this period to be about one overlap, which is precisely what we have. So there is no statistically significant correspondence between flares that we've observed this year and the earthquakes that have occurred in the same period. There's also an energy problem with the flare theory of earthquakes. No, not that sort of energy problem, although that is a problem. It might surprise you to learn that flares don't produce much energy, or at least not much of it reaches the Earth. Very few flares have even been detected in the total solar irradiance. That's the amount of energy that the Earth receives from the Sun. Here is the best known example of a flare observed in total solar radiance. It shows a temporary increase of just three hundredths of one percent in the energy input to the Earth. There are several other arguments against this particular idea, but I think we can rule out the flare theory just on what we've done so far. Now let's do the same sort of analysis for geomagnetic storms. In other words, Earth-directed coronal mass ejections. Here is our familiar earthquake plot again. And here is the same graph that we did for flares, but this time showing the Kp index, which is a measure of geomagnetic activity. It shows we've had four minor storm periods 
since the beginning of the year, which is shown here in red, and five unsettled periods shown in blue. Anything less than unsettled is considered quiet by Noah. Again, we ask the question, are these two plots similar? If anything, to me, the correspondence looks worse than it did for the flares. Again, the largest earthquakes occurred when there was no geomagnetic activity, and the minor geomagnetic storm periods produced no earthquakes. However, we do have two days when there was geomagnetic activity and at least a six magnitude earthquake. Again, this is shown with the yellow arrows. Applying our previous statistical tests, we find there should be between one and two such overlap dates, which is precisely what we have. So once again, we conclude there is no link between geomagnetic activity and earthquake activity. So now let's turn to planetary alignments. The conjunction of the Moon, Jupiter and Venus in the evening sky near the Sun made me realize that we had the four objects that have the biggest gravitational effect on the Earth all within a few tens of degrees of each other. In other words, they're all pulling in the same direction. So if there was anything to the planetary alignment theory of earthquakes, then we should have gotten mega earthquakes on the 24th and 25th, when the alignment was optimum. So what actually happened? I checked with the USGS, and this is what I found. Two relatively quiet days, with no quakes larger than 5.3. However, one thing seems to have been missed in this discussion. If you consider the Moon, Sun, and just those solar system planets, there are over 250 planetary alignments of three or more objects every year. If you throw in odd comets, asteroids and imaginary objects as the proponents of this series seem to do, then you have one alignment on every day. So any earthquake can be assigned a responsible alignment. It's like saying the sun shone today, look it must have caused that earthquake. The simple fact is there is no known link between solar activity, geomagnetic storms, or planetary alignments to earthquakes. It is plate tectonics that cause earthquakes. We don't need to look for more exotic reasons. The answer to the trivia question is Ptolemy started his calendar on the first year of the reign of the Babylonian king Nabonassar. Hence it is called the Nabonassar era. If you want to find out more about the sun, follow the links in the description box below. If you like this video and would like to see some more editions of the sun today, or some of my global warming related videos, or science set to music videos, then go to my channel, they are all listed there. If you want to keep abreast of what's happening on the sun, I welcome subscriptions. So that's it for today, keep safe, bye for now.